And today we're taking a look at a question of grace in the Paul's teachings. Uh, but before we do that, before we start on that, I just wanted to share a story that I, I heard this week. It's a funny story that uh, it's about, well, it's about a guy by the name of the polite burglar. Yes, the polite burglar was a guy that would break into people's houses in the middle of the night and he was very delicate, very ginger in what he was doing because he didn't want to wake anybody up because he didn't want to you know, have anybody lose any sleep. Uh, and so he would carefully go around the house and he would get the goods that he needed and he would exit. And as he was exiting, he would leave a little thank you card on one of the tables there in the house because he's very polite. Uh, and one particular night, he uh, broke into this two-story house and he was downstairs in the first story and he went around and he sacked up all the goods that he needed and then he went up to the second store and was going to work through the bedrooms and he came to the master bedroom and there in the master bedroom the husband and wife were there asleep and so he very gingerly very carefully went around the bedroom looking for jewelry and stuff like that but one at one point he wasn't watching what he was doing and he actually turned around and he hit this lamp and he knocked the lamp off of a desk and it broke and it crashed and it made a big sound and well you can imagine the husband and the wife they immediately they set up see what was going on and so of course the polite burglar went over and turned on the lights for him uh, and they looked at him and he said to them i'm sorry this is all my fault i didn't mean to wake you up i was just supposed to be in here and get the goods and leave but but it was just all my fault and i didn't watch what that that, that lamp was there and i broke i broke your lamp and i'm really sorry about that of course, the problem is that now that you've seen me, I'm going to have to shoot both of you. Uh, but before I shoot both of you, I think that introductions would be appropriate. Uh, and so first of all, he says, I want to in introduce myself. I am the polite burglar. And then he looked at the, the woman and he said, and ma'am, uh, who, what is your name? And she said, my name is Elaine. And he said, oh, Elaine, that's, that's such a beautiful name. In fact, in fact, that was my mother's name. Uh, and, you know, I can't shoot anybody named Elaine. And then he looked at the guy and he said, and sir, tell me, uh, uh, what is your name? And the guy said, uh, b -b 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 Bob, but, but my friends call me Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you here this morning. And before we get down to work, let's, let's pray together. Lord, give you thanks and praise for your grace and gifts towards us to lift us up in all the struggles and and all the things that come against us, you are here for us this day. We give you thanks that you care about us and you're so gracious and loving towards us that you would give your only son. Help us this day as we listen to the teachings of Paul that give glory to you and give glory to your son, Jesus. Help us to receive the message that he has for us, the message of grace. We ask these things in his name, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So I was thinking this week about Paul's teachings on grace, and it's, it's a pretty complicated and detailed thing in a lot of ways, but, but there are some kind of clear themes that come through it as you read and as you think about his life, as you hear it in the Acts of the Apostles. And, and I guess the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about the grace of God is that, well, that grace is seeking you. Grace is each day seeking you and seeking me in our lives uh, to be in contact with us and to provide us with God's mercy, God's strength, God's healing power in our lives. Uh, and that's a wonderful thing because when we get right with God, that's really important. And Paul the Apostle says this, he says, all of us need to be made right with God. When we get right with God, then real healing and restoration can take place in our lives. The problem is that uh, a lot of times in our lives, we, we resist that grace. And there's various reasons for why people do that. Sometimes, well, sometimes it's because we, we're not for sure that we're really worthy of God's grace. Maybe we've done something in the past or, or we're living in certain situations where we don't think that really God would want us or God would accept us or, or God would care about us, which is, which is not true. But sometimes we, we convince ourselves that we're not worthy. Now, as I was thinking about that this week, I was reminded of a story uh, in the Gospels that is a story about a little guy by the name of Zacchaeus. Anybody ever heard of the name of Zacchaeus in the scriptures? You know, it says, maybe you've sung that song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree because he what? He wanted Jesus to see. So Zacchaeus was a, a small guy, but he was also a, a tax collector in the town of Jericho. And, and tax collectors, well, uh, in that day, tax collectors were considered to be corrupt. They were considered to be collaborators with the Roman government that was oppressing the people there in that area. And they were also considered to be kind of criminals who ripped off people as they 
collected people's taxes and took advantage of them in a variety of different ways. And so, so Zacchaeus didn't have the greatest of reputations in town, and, and he was probably probably sure about he was really not worthy of God's grace, and he really shouldn't be too close to this rabbi, this young rabbi that was a, this great teacher, but he did want to see him. And so it says that what he did was, in order to kind of get up above the crowd, he climbed up in a tree, and Jesus said it was coming through the town. Now, let me just say that Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was up in that tree. And God's grace was looking for him, was looking for Zacchaeus. It says that Jesus is passing by and he sees Zacchaeus up in the tree and he says to him by first name, Zacchaeus, I want you to come down out of that tree because I want to have dinner with you in your house tonight. Now, now let us just say that that was kind of a, of a scandalous thing for Jesus to say because those folks, those tax collectors were thought to be this kind of the scum of the earth and, and what good rabbi, what good teacher of the law, what good teacher of God would want to be associated with those folks. But he says, Zacchaeus, I want to have dinner with you because God's grace was seeking Zacchaeus. It says that night when he was there at dinner with Jesus, it says at one point he kind of stops the proceedings and stops the party and says, now, now he gets up and he says, now Jesus, I just got a little announcement I need to make. And that is simply this, that I'm going to sell half of everything I possess and I'm going to give the proceeds to the poor. And if I've ripped off anybody and took advantage of anybody, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restore to them everything I, I took from them times four. In other words, God's grace came seeking him even though he thought he was unworthy and it changed his life. It changed the way that he was going to live and it says that Jesus gets up and says, I tell you the truth, salvation has come to this house this night. Because even though he thought he was unworthy, that didn't really matter because God's grace was still seeking him. Sometimes though, we we think that we're, we're not really sure, you know, we really need God's grace. I mean, we're doing okay. <clears throat> Things are going fine in our lives. We kind of got it covered. Uh, and it seems like we're kind of bumping along. And so we really don't, we're not really for sure about that. What, what do we need that for? Uh, and if you want an example of that kind of thinking, I would just invite you to take a look at the story of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, who, as you may remember, if you read the Acts of the Apostle, he was originally known as Saul. That was his birth name. And Saul was convinced that he was serving God by persecuting the church and by helping to execute Christians. He was sure that he was following what God wanted in his life. He was very sincere about that, and he was sincerely wrong. But he thought he had it covered, and he was dedicated. And what he was going to do, he, he was going to go up to Damascus where he was going to find more Christians and imprison them and persecute them. And it says that he was on the road to Damascus. You may remember this story. He's on his horse and he's riding up to Damascus. And guess what? It says God's grace was seeking him. Even when he didn't understand that he needed it, God's grace was seeking him. And it says that the resurrected Lord Jesus literally knocks him off of his horse, knocks him on his backside and says to him, Saul, why do you persecute me? And it's very interesting because what it actually was doing was persecuting the body of Christ, the church. Why do you persecute me? To which Saul's reply was, Lord, I don't even know who you are. I haven't got a clue. He thought he was serving God, but he didn't even know who the Lord was. He says, I am Jesus, who you persecute. And the reality was, as you see in some of the old translations, well, Saul was kind of stuck in a thorn bush. He didn't even realize it. His life was being pulled down and stuck, but he didn't even realize it. And Jesus was there literally to open the eyes of his heart to see the situation that his life was really in. Grace was seeking him even though he was blind to his situation. God's grace, my friend, seeks you and seeks me regardless of our attitudes and regardless of our opinions about ourselves or about what our need for God is. God's grace is seeking you this morning and seeking me. God's grace is also, if I were to characterize another kind of theme in Paul's teachings, God's grace is not simply seeking us, but God's grace is a gift to us. It's a gift. You know, if I was to go, say, down to Walmart and Mustang or over in Yukon this afternoon, and I was to ask people, I stand out there in the front and ask the first hundred adults who come out, okay, so tell me how to get right with God. 
uh, this is the answers that I would get about 99% of the time. I would be something like this, well, you, you do the best as you can and you try and be right. Or, uh, well, you try and be a moral person. Or, well, you try and do more good than bad. And if you do more good than bad, then you'll be okay with God. And all that's based on what we do. And the scripture says that's not the basis for grace. That grace is a gift. It's given freely to us. It's like the Apostle Paul says again in Romans 3. All of us need to be made right with God by God's grace, which is a free gift through Jesus Christ. But we think, wait a second, I, I've, got to get, I've got to make myself right. I've got to get right with God. No, no, that's not the way it works. It's a gift that we're given. And Paul was certain about that. Because he knew the life that he had led and the struggles that he had had. And if you go back this afternoon and you read in Corinthians, what you'll find is there is a point in which he says simply this. He says, you know, he says, I'm, I'm really, he writes to the Corinthians, I'm really the least of the apostles. And I am unfit to be an apostle because of the stuff that I've done in my past where I persecuted the church and I helped to imprison Christians and helped to execute Christians. I have no business being in this. But... I am what I am by the grace of God. By the grace of God. It's a gift that was given to me, even though I was utterly unworthy of it. It's something that God did for me in his love. And it happened because of what Jesus did on the cross. Did you ever, did you ever read the, the crucifixion story? Did you ever listen to the crucifixion story? And at one point it says, Jesus is on the cross, and he says, it is finished. It is finished. Well, what's the it? The it is the plan to offer God's grace to every human being that needed it. That's why he was doing that. That's why he sacrificed himself, so that that grace would be there for every human being that needed it as a gift. Grace is seeking you. Grace is a gift to you. And how do we receive that? Well, the Apostle Paul says, as you heard it in the reading this morning that Max read, it is by faith, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Faith. Okay, so what's faith? Well, again, if you go back into the New Testament and you look at the book of Hebrews, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, it simply says this. That first verse says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It is the conviction of things not seen, unseen and an example of that, if you want to know what that really looks like in life, you'll find no better example than in the Gospels where it talks about a guy who was a centurion in the Roman army. A centurion was a captain of 100. And he was a man in some considerable authority. And apparently, uh, out on the Sea of Galilee, uh, there in Palestine, there was a garrison of Roman soldiers uh, in the area of a little town of Capernaum there, a fishing village out on the Sea of Galilee. And apparently this Roman soldier, this centurion, this captain of a hundred, had gotten in pretty good with the Jews that were living in that area. In fact, it says he built a synagogue in that little town of Capernaum. And at one point, one of uh, this centurion's uh, servants gets ill. And so he tries, of course, to help him as best he could, but he doesn't get better. He gets worse. And so he decides to go to these folks that were Jewish uh, uh, rabbis and uh, leaders there in that little community of Capernaum and says, would you go to, would you go to Jesus in my behalf? And would you ask him if he would heal my servant? And the rabbis and the leaders say, sure, we'll go to him. And they go to Jesus, and they say, Jesus, there's this centurion, this Roman centurion. I, we understand it's a Roman, but he's got this servant who's ill, and he wants to see if you would heal him. And by the way, Jesus, he loves our nation, and he's built a synagogue, and he's worthy of this help. And Jesus says, sure, I'll go. You may remember the story, he, he's going, Jesus is going to the centurion's house and uh, he gets about there and the centurion realizes he's coming and he sends one of his servants that says, go to Jesus and give him this message before he gets to the house. And he stops Jesus in the way and this, this messenger says, this is what the centurion says to you, he says, Master, uh, really, you don't, want, you don't need to come to my house, it's okay. What was he doing? He was a Jew, Jesus. If he went to this Roman pagan's house, Jesus would be considered kind of unclean and, 
And boy, that's inappropriate behavior. So he sends this guy and says, you don't have to come to my house. It's okay. He says, Jesus, I'm a centurion. I'm a captain of a hundred. I'm over a hundred people. And if I say to one guy, go do this, he does it. And if I say to another guy, go do that, he does it. I'm a man under authority. And he says, all I want from you is if you will just say the word, my servant will be healed. you understand what's happened? Here's this guy, this Jewish guy, who's this impoverished looking, kind of probably rough looking uh, teacher, a Jewish teacher that's wandering around through these different villages. Uh, you know, if you'd seen him, you wouldn't be impressed with him, that's for sure. And yet this guy could see past what he sees with his physical eyes to see the reality that's beyond that. And that has a conviction of that unseen reality that's there. And he says, I know that Jesus is the Son of God. I know that he, is under, he has authority. I know that he has power. I trust that. I believe in that. I have faith in that. And so Jesus, all you got to do is you just got to say the word and it'll get straightened out. That's faith. Jesus says he's never seen any faith like that in all of Israel. That's faith. Faith, my friend, is when we, when we, we may see something in front of us, we may see a reality, but we can look past that reality to see the presence and action of God and decide to trust that. That's faith. And what the apostle says is when you have faith in that reality that is the Lord and in his action and in his grace for you, and then you can receive it into your lives and let it start working. By grace we have been saved through the means of faith. Now, as I was thinking about that this week, I, I was reminded of a, a story that I heard a while back about this true story about this woman who lived out on the West Coast. And she'd had some, she was going through some pretty rough times. Uh, she had, well, she was uh, struggling with uh, drug addiction. She was also struggling with alcohol addiction. Uh, she had had an affair with a guy and gotten pregnant and the way that she dealt with that was she had an abortion and in, in the process of all that kind of stuff there she was also had this friend of hers who she loved dearly who had cancer and she was having to watch this friend die and then she said it was just a really kind of a, a rough rough time in her life and she said even though she was horrified by the, the thought of becoming a Christian, that she started going to a little local church in the area that she was at. And she said what she would do is on Sunday morning, she would sneak in on the, and she would sit on the back row and she would listen to the music in the first part of the service. And then when the guy started to, go, to get ready to preach, that she would exit at that point and she would leave and go home. And she said as she was going through this difficulty and, and she was felt down and in despair about her life. She said there was something strange that would happen. She said she would be in her house and all of a sudden she would feel this like it was in this corner up here behind her. There was this presence and it was a presence of, it was a presence, she said, of love and of care. It was, it was a present kind of like this, this father that loved and cared her. And she said she, she didn't know exactly what was going on, but she said, I knew who that was. And she said she would get out and she would walk out and go out for a walk out on the street. And she said it was almost like there was this cat falling back behind. They were this little softly falling back behind her. She said this presence was following her, this, this presence of, of love and care. And she said this went on for a while. And she said one Sunday she finally went to uh, this church again. Uh, and she sat again back on the back row, snuck in right at the beginning of the service. Then she listened to the music and she said, and that day I decided I was going to stay for the sermon. And she said the sermon sounded like somebody who was trying to convince her of the existence of extraterrestrials. And she said after the service, and after the sermon, that the people stood up for the last hymn and they started to sing the last hymn. And she said it was so deep and so moving as they sang, it was like between the lines, they were singing to her and they were holding her up in their arms. And she said she left. She walked back to her house. And she said, I was at the door and I, I opened the door. And as I opened the door, she said, I stopped. And I said to myself, okay, you can come in. 
And she says at that point, she opened her heart to the grace of God. And she said it's at that point that her life started to change. And I'm just wondering this morning, are you ready to open your heart to the grace of God? Are you ready to accept his love for you? And it may have been a pretty rough week, and, and it'd be something that you'd love to feel. Are you ready to receive his grace for you? It has to be done. Not once in a lifetime, it has to be done every day. As we sense his grace seeking us, as we live with that grace through faith, and as we let him change us into the person he wants us to be. Are you ready to receive that this morning? Let's pray again. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your love and grace that is seeking us this day. Help us not to resist that. Help us to open our hearts to that, to receive the healing and strength that you want for us as you lead us in our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.